So we're going to look at an example of a graphical approach to solving a statics problem. We're going to start with this example of a crank slider and there's a force uh, pushing on the slider of 250 pounds and currently it's in a certain position which is shown in the picture and we want it to be in static equilibrium so there has to be this moment applied here to balance it out and keep it from moving. So we need to break this down and and examine uh, the forces on each piece in order to look at what is that moment going to be equal to in order to balance out that force. You can't solve it directly from the entire system, so we're going to break it down and look at the individual components in order to solve the statics on each of them individually. And we're going to take in a graphical approach which just says that the some of the forces on a body has to be equal to zero, so you get some force triangles, and that the moment is equal to some force times a perpendicular distance between the forces. So let's look at the start of the slider and look at that one. And we know we have some forces acting on here, one from the applied load. Uh, the ground is going to have a normal force pushing up on the body. And link 3 is a two force member. There's only forces at the ends. So we know the direction of that is going to be pushing back on the, on the block. If we know the load is 250 pounds, we're going to call the other two forces. F14 is the force from the ground, which is 1, onto the block, which is M4. And the force from the connecting bar is force 3 4. It's from member 3 onto member 4. And if we take those three forces and we draw them in a triangle in their respective directions, the length of each side of the triangle represents the magnitude of that force. We're interested in the force 3, 4 because that's the one that gets transmitted back to the crank member 2. And if we look at this triangle here, if we can take some physical measurements of the length of those lines, we can get a relationship between the length and the magnitude of the force. And if I measure the length of those two vectors drawn there, uh, the 250 pound force is uh, roughly two and a quarter inches long and force 3, 4 is two and five sixteenths inch long. That I know my force 3, 4 has to be a certain percentage above 250 pounds and it ends up being the ratio of two and five sixteenths to two and a quarter which gives us a overall load of 256 pounds. That force is also being applied on link 3. It's a two force member so we know that the forces are going to be equal and opposite to each other on that link. And that force also gets put on, an equal and opposite force will be put on uh, link 2 at location B. So I can draw that on there. And I know that since the some of the forces has to equal 0, that at O2 there has to be an equal and opposite force to balance out the force at B. And I know that that force magnitude should be the same one we found before of 256 pounds. If I measure the perpendicular distance between those two forces, and it's around 7 eighths of an inch. I find that my moment is equal to that magnitude of that force, 256 pounds, times 7 eighths of an inch, and we have 224 inch pounds. And that moment will balance out the force P and it will be in static equilibrium. And that's how you solve the problem.